Hello there and welcome to another video from me showing you this time how I make a wooden bow tie though without the leather working part of it. My leather working skill is not up to scrap yet so I'm not going to show that part. Anyway, so any good project we start with selecting our wood and I have this nice piece of that oak. I had already planned to take it of course but uh, might as well show you a little storage. So we measure out what we need and you can see in the back there are these small pieces of uh, rosewood that I'm going to be using later in another video for making some spoons. So I found some old spoons at uh, a local uh, local uh, flea market and they had all wooden handles but they were broken. So I'm going to re-handle them. <laughs> so yeah, careful measurements here. It's uh, I kept taking my hand up to my throat and feeling out how big it is and I decided on 12 centimeters from side to side uh, so I'm just measuring it out where I need to cut and move from there the idea from the bow tie is just uh, simple bow tie inspiration where I looked at some older model of bow ties and also wanted to keep it a little simple without it being too simple. So I've seen plenty of bow ties on Instagram and YouTube where they have basically just taken a piece of wood and cut it out on a bandsaw and that's the bow tie. So I decided for myself that I wanted a challenge and instead I wanted to, as I always do, just work with my hand tools or my lathe. And in this case it'll be my hand tools. So marking it out and getting a feel for the wood and I'm gonna shape it when we've sawn it with my rasps my file a lot of the time I will be talking but I'll just every now and then chime in with a little comment about what's going on uh, uh, <laughs> a big point by the way now that I have a little space here is uh, I can see I always need to be better at focusing uh, where the video needs to be um, on attention. So I'm sorry for sometimes being and working out of focus. We're gonna fix that uh, later. So this is my little tiny showback uh, vice that I've had with me for a couple of years now. I have a tiny workshop as I'll show in a later video. I really like uh, my Japanese pull saws for when I'm doing work like this. Only problem here is that I start going crooked quite early on and leads to some crookedness later. But that's something we'll fix with the uh, with my hand plane. I'm gonna use a Stanley four and a half to just plane it nice and flat and get a good good flat surface to work on. It's always easier to have a flat surface to do your measurements on. So, right, what I did there is just I only took one side off. I don't have a plan yet for the other side. I'm thinking about making another bow tie, maybe one for myself or another friend. But I really like, again, the Padauk is just such an amazing color. And it has an amazing, amazing smell when you work with it. And here comes one of my favorite sounds. The sound of a really sharp, freshly sharpened Stanley four and a half, just the Christmas, and now into high uh, four times speed. <laughs> the nice little curls that just come out and it's just amazing. I could just hand plane all day and just enjoy both the sound and the feel, and watching the curls. So basically what I'm doing is also I'm determining the thickness of it, working with the thickness, trying to make sure I don't get it uh, too thin or too thick because I want to be able to take some material off when I'm when I'm shaping it. 
well shaven with a rasp than with my file. And for that it needs to be a certain thickness so there's some material to take off. And give us this nice, well, bow shape. So we'll get a cup and a bow on the sides. And again, we do the measurements, but this time, for real, where we can uh, see the center and we can see all the other sides that we need to work on. So I do the centering quite precise, as precise as I wanted, of course. But the rest of the measurements, I actually uh, more just take a feel for it, because I don't want the shape to become too rigid. I want it to be fluid and organic. I want one side to be a little higher than the other. So I just I just go by hand and see what feels nice when I tie it, when I draw it. Uh, I even re-correct them. These lines in the middle are going to be where the dip is going to be, where I make a little cup. And these lines are just to help me transfer to the other side, where I'll make the opposite movement. So if I make something that cups, then on the other side it needs to shape up in a bow. Otherwise, you will get the... Un a less favorable structure and feel for your bow tie. So to start with, I just took off some material with my my chisels, my carver chisels, also freshly sharpened uh, on my new Tormic. <laughs> and here, just sped up to help see it. So I was very careful, because this is my first bow tie, not to take off too much material and instead leave more material to work with the rest and file. All in all, in, uh, I, I spent about an hour using rasps and file because I wanted to be very gentle with it and see how, how it went along. And even here in the initial shaping, I used an old rasp just to get a, a good feel of where we're going and how it feels. Let's just get a feel for when I do this, how much does the material move? This is my first time making something like this in Padauk and using these tools on Padauk. So I wanted to be sure that I didn't take too much or too little. And if I pushed this hard, I took this much. So it's all a learning experience, and it's learning experiences are well, great values of life. This is just a small, well, actually, bowl, bowl making tool. I used to assist me because it's quite sharp. I can just pretty up the edges a little. Even now, it should be clear that the bow type shape is coming in too nicely. You can see the cups are already there. Now we just need to get the sides nice, and then we can counter act the bows. And again, sorry for being out of frame. This is just a nice. Uh, a nice Stanley and now it's covered skull. Yeah. We get the nice bow shape. We work on more. This plane is called a uh, book tower in Danish. Now I'm marking on the back side to show where I need to make the, the cup. And I start on the back side with the knife. Just a simple Mora knife that I've been planning on giving a new handle because these are the standard handles, or standard handle from the manufacturer in Sweden. But I want a better handle because I I want a bigger handle because I grip it too hard when they're too small. And sometimes I feel like my hand is slipping onto the knife. And when you have a quite sharp knife, that is an unpleasant feeling. So I'm just working my way down to get this nice dip in the middle of the bow tie. 
and at the same time make this cupping feeling. Except for the initial lines on the, the wood, I haven't made a plan for this, it's all going directly from my head. <laughs> Maybe next time I should make a plan, but I actually like working and improvising on the way. And from here on out, it's just lots of rest and a lot of file work. I even finish the whole thing with just a really, really fine file, cabinet maker's file, instead of using any sandpaper. I wanted to try and I wanted to see how it felt. And in my opinion, it gives a nice, well, I was about to say organic feel, but I hate the word organic, but I'm going to use it anyway, a nice organic feel to the whole thing. And here's a large skip of time. I think I just skipped 30 minutes for you guys, so you don't have to see that. Probably you can see the shape coming, and I just, I love the whole process of it. I loved seeing the bow tie slowly taking shape in my hand. It was just an amazing feeling. I bet for wood carvers, the whole process of taking a lump of wood and slowly making it into something that you couldn't envision when you just looked at the lump of wood is, is amazing. At this point, I also discovered that I need to make myself a chair for my workshop. <laughs> so that is a project that I'm going to do soon. Just a simple workshop chair out of some pine. Especially when I did the leather working, I was missing something to rest uh, against while I was working on the table. So here, I was looking at it several times and thinking I should have taken more of when I had the chance with the with my bowl gouge, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to risk gouging out too much and not getting the the nice cup. So sacrificing speed for for the effect instead. And since it's my own time and it's a gift for a friend, it doesn't really matter to me that I spend half an hour more working on it than I might have to. If it's not something I'm selling, then time efficiency is not a priority. Yeah, as I said, a lot of <laughs> a lot of rasping and filing later. Uh, I got really good with my rasp and my file and got really efficient and I learned how to to feel the shape, so I'm positive about that. So here is the part that just shows the magic when you put the oil on for the first time, the first coat of oil on your project, and you just see all the color and how vibrant. I mean, th this red color of Padauk is just amazing. And as you'll see in the, the final picture, when it has the coat of, the coat of wax as well, beeswax is just... Mm, just amazing. So I left it there, dried, and I gave it another coat of oil. And then the day after, I gave it beeswax, and I, of course, forgot to record that. Uh, but yeah. So for the, the leather part, I just made a simple loop in leather around the middle part and I made a thin string with holes in it and a simple clasp just to tie it all together. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and that you think the bow tie is nice. I'm planning on making more. I don't know if I will record making more, but thank you for watching and have a great day.